In this video, we're going to look at some exam style questions involving thirds. We're going to start off with this question, and it says write 1 over the root of 27 plus 2 over the root of 3 as a single fraction in its lowest form. We've got a couple of different approaches. I'm going to do both methods, and you can decide which you prefer. What I'm going to do is now write that the root of 27 can be written as 3 root 3. We've seen this in a previous video. So I'm going to have 1 over 3 root 3. And I'm going to add to that now 2 over root 3. If I multiply numerator and denominator by 3, I've got an equivalent fraction. So that is 6 over 3 root 3. If I now add the fractions, the denominators are the same. All we need to do is add the numerators. And we can write that now as 7 over 3 root 3. By convention, we uh, now rationalise the denominator of a fraction by multiplying the numerator and the denominator by the third value. That's going to give me now 7 root 3. And depending on the number of marks, I'm just going to write this out, that this is going to be 3 times by 3, which is 9. If it was worth 3 or 4 marks, I would be very, very careful in terms of the steps that I show. So you might want to write that this is 3 times by 3. That's one approach. If we look here, now combining the fractions, if we had a common denominator, that would be the root of 27 times by the root of 3. Now this is going to give me the root of 81. The root of 81 is 9, which is a rational number. If I did that, I'd need to multiply the 1 by the root 3, and then the 2 by the root of 27. So in the numerator, what I'm going to now write is that this is going to be 3 plus 2 lots of now, instead of the root of 27, 3 root 3. And I'm going to write that this is going to be the root of 81. Remember, the root of A multiplied by the root of B is the same as the root of AB. So in the numerator, I've got 1 root 3 plus 6 root 3, which is going to give me 7 root 3. The square root of 81 is 9. So that is an alternative. The reason that one works out so nicely is when we multiply these two numbers, we get a square number. And of course, square root in it is going to give us an integer value. Um, if that wasn't the case, I would simply rationalize and combine the fractions that way. So that's the first one. Okay, in this one, we've got an identity. We're given that a minus the root of b over the quantity 1 minus root 8 is the same as 2 plus root 2, and we're asked to find the values of a and b. All I'm going to do here is simply multiply through by the denominator. So multiplying both sides now by the denominator, we've got 2 plus root 2, and then we've got 1 minus the root of 8. Again, you might want to write the root of 8 as a simplified third, and that would be 2 root 2. We see this in previous videos. There are advantages and disadvantages to simplifying initially. I'm going to go ahead and simplify. So all I'm going to do is write that this is going to be 1 minus 2 root 2 instead of 1 minus root 8. If we expand this out, showing four workings, we're going to get 2 minus 4 root 2 plus root 2. And then we're going to get now root 2 times by 2, which is 2, and then multiply by 2, which is 4. So that's going to be minus 4. The advantage of leaving that as root 8 is that you would have got the root of 16, and the root of 16, of course, is 4. Okay, so just now combining these, 2 minus 4 is minus 2. Minus 4 root 2 plus 1 root 2 is going to give us minus 3, uh, 3 root 2. Okay, is that complete? Well, we certainly got our value of a. a is going to be now negative 2. What we need to do, though, is find b. So I'm going to reverse this particular process. So what I'm going to write, instead of root uh, 3 root 2, I'm going to write the square root of 3 squared times by root 2. So this is going to give us now 9 times by 2, which is going to give us the root of 18. So we're undoing that. So what we're going to have then is b is actually going to be in here 18. So the value of b is 18. You might want to write this here, minus 2 
and then we're going to have so uh, minus uh, negative two minus the root of 18. So all I've done is simply reverse the process. If we were simplifying root 18, we would go this way. So I'm going backwards. An alternative way to see this is now, if you want to now put it back under the root, we square this number and then multiply it by this one right here. And that will give us the value that needs to go under the root. So the value of a is negative two. The value of b is going to be now 18. Again, if you want to check that, go ahead and use a calculator. So with the calculator now, if we do this, we've got now negative 2. So negative 2. Then we've got minus the root of 18 over now 1 minus the root of 8. And that should give us 2 plus the root 2. So there we go. Perfectly fine. You probably, possibly, more than likely, wouldn't have the facility of a calculator, but if you're doing this at home, it's nice to check. Okay, in question 10 here, we're asked to solve the equation 3x plus 4 is equal to root 2x plus 6, and it says write in your answer as a rational fraction. Okay, let's just look at this. This isn't root 2x, so the x is outside. Sometimes you'll see this written, and I'll rewrite this, as 3x plus 4 is equal to x root 2. This is just easier in terms of the notation. So we're not, we don't think that this is the root now of 2x. The x isn't under the root. So what I'm going to do is subtract 4 from both sides and show in full workings we've got 3x is going to be equal to x root 2 plus 2. Collecting like terms on the left-hand side, 3x minus x root 2 is equal to 2. Factoring the x out, we've got now 3 minus the root 2, and that's equal to 2. We can write that x is equal to 2 over 3 minus the root 2. It's asking us for now a rational fraction. In a previous video, we looked at rationalising the denominator of a fraction. So we can say that x is going to be equal to 2, and then we're going to multiply this by the conjugate. So we're going to create a difference of squares by multiplying the numerator and the denominator of the fraction by the same values, but the signs changed over. This is an exam question. So again, think, how much working do I need to do to gain full marks? So I'm not going to actually write all of this uh, out, but if it was an exam, I probably would. So I'm going to have 3 plus the root of 2. Now I know that creating the difference of squares, I'm going to have 9 minus 2. So all I'm going to do is write in here 7. If it's an exam and you want to show four mark, uh, workings for the marks, then it's 3 times 3 plus the 3 root 2 minus the 3 root 2, and then we're going to have minus 2. These will drop out, as we've seen before, which just leaves us a 9 minus 2, which is 7. To be on the safe side, put that in. It took me about 10 seconds. It will certainly gain a mark on some papers. So there we go. Um, in a calculator, it's highly likely to say 6 plus 2 root 2 over 7. So if we just check that at this stage, let's go ahead and do that. So we've got 2, and we're dividing that by 3 minus the root 2. And that's going to give us now the exactly what we... Uh, it hoped 6 plus the 2, root 2 over 7. So as long as our workings are good from here, we are okay. And again, if you wanted to check that value, you could plug it into both sides of the equation and check that it holds true. So there we go. All we've done is simply now isolated the terms in x on one side, or if you like, collected like terms. We factorised, divided through, and rationalised. So none of these skills are new. We've looked at lots of them in algebra algebra before and rationalizing the denominator has appeared certainly in this video section okay in this question we're asked to simplify 4p all to the power of 3 over 2 multiplied by 3 root p leaving our answer in the form a p to the power of n okay so what we're doing here we're working with thirds and indices um, I think it's important here to say that the root of p 
can be written as p to the half. So these, as we saw before, are interchangeable. So the root of p and p to the half. This is saying the one half root. The one half root is the square root. So what I'm going to do is the following. I'm actually going to rewrite this. Now we've got 4 to the power of 3 over 2. And then we're going to have p to the power of 3 over 2. Multiplied by 3p to the power of 1 half. When we are multiplying now with the rules of indices, we add. Let's just deal with this first. We need to take the square root of 4, which is 2, and cube it. So if we take now the 3 over 2 power of 4, we take the square root and then raise it to the power of 3. I'm now going to look at this right here, multiplied. When we're multiplying, what we're going to do is add the powers. So 3 over 2 plus a half is going to give us 4 over 2. And I'm going to write this. I'm going to write 4 over 2 because I need to do another line of work in any way because I'm going to multiply by the 3. So that leaves me now 24 and that will be p to the power of 2. So we can say that a is equal to 24 and we've got n equal to 2. So all I've done is use my understanding of thirds and now for rules of indices to convert. If you really wanted, what you could have written is that that was, uh, I personally wouldn't do this, but if we write p to the power of 3 over 2, what this is saying is the following. It's saying that it's going to be now the square root of p to the power of 3. So you could see this as root p times by the root of p times by the root of p. And of course, we've got the root of p here. That right there is going to give me p. That right there is going to give me p. So of course, we get p squared. I wouldn't see it like so. I would convert this one now to uh, index notation. So the root of p is p to the half. So there we go. There's four exam style questions, uh, certainly looking at the thirds initially and then looking at thirds and the rules of indices in this last question.